Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to learn how to spawn enemies using object pooling. If you're wondering what is object pooling and why are we using it instead of just instantiating and destroying objects, well it is because it's way more performant, it saves up memory and avoids the potential spikes of the garbage collection. The whole idea of object pooling is to basically replace the instantiate and destroy calls by reusing the same objects from a pool. Think about it this way. Let's say you have a game with 10 enemies shooting at you and they all have miniguns and they shoot really fast. This means that you would have to instantiate thousands of bullets over a short period of time and also destroy them on impact and that's very expensive. Instead, we can disable the bullets on impact, release them into a pool, leaving them inactive in the scene and when the enemy shoots again, instead of instantiating new sets of bullets, we can just re-enable the inactive ones from the pool and make them go back to the shooting point. That means we can use a single set of bullets and that's exactly what we are going to do with the enemy spawning. We are not going to spawn and destroy hundreds of enemies, we are going to reuse the ones who got disabled and released into the pool. Let's begin. This is a scene that I made for the Navmesh system video, if you want you can check it out. And what's happening here, we have a player, the green capsule, and he moves wherever I click on the map. We also have a red capsule, which is the enemy, his only job is to catch the player and when he collides with him, the player takes damage and the enemy gets destroyed. For now, because we are going to release him later into the pool instead of destroying him as I said. Here are the scripts for the player and the enemy from the last time. They are both using the Navmesh system. Let's start the setup. First, we need a spawner which will be an empty game object that's going to contain multiple spawn points, also empty objects. Let's rename them properly, move them wherever you want your enemies to spawn and create and attach a spawner script to the spawner game object. Now open it up. As variables, we are going to need an array of type transform that is going to hold all of our spawn points. And we also need two private floats in order to create a timer to control how often the enemies spawn because we don't want them spawning every frame. So we'll have a serialized private float called the time between spawns to control the rate of spawning and the private float time since last spawn. In the update function, we are going to check if time.time is bigger than time since last spawn. And if it is, we want to spawn an enemy and reset the time since last spawn to be equal to time that time plus time between spawns. So if we set time between spawns to 5, for example, it's going to spawn an enemy every 5 seconds. Pretty straightforward. Now let's start implementing the object pooling system. First thing we'll have to do is make sure up here we are using unity engine.pool. And now let's create a reference to the enemy. So serialize field, enemy, enemy prefab. If the script that your enemy has is named differently, make sure to put that name instead of enemy. Next thing we want to do is create the pool, so private i object pool of type enemy, and let's call it enemy pool. Now in the awake function, we are going to instantiate a concrete implementation of the i object pool interface. So we can do that by setting the enemy pool to be equal to a new i object pool of type enemy. And as a parameter, let's pass in a create enemy function that we are going to make in a second. So enemy enemy equals to instantiate the enemy prefab and make sure to return him. Now we can go to the update function and here where we want to spawn the enemy we have to get it from the pool so enemy pool dot get. Now it should be able to get the enemies from the pool but before that we have to set the enemy pool in the enemy script and also release them into the pool. In this script we have to create another i object pool of type enemy and we can call it the same name. Let's make a set pool function that is going to take an i object pool interface as a parameter and set the enemy pool to equal pool. And in the on trigger enter function, where the enemy usually got destroyed when he collided with the player, we are just going to release him to the enemy pool. So enemy pool dot release and pass in this because this is the object that we want to release. Let's save and go back to Unity to see what happens. One thing I forgot is to set the pool in the spawner script. So enemy dot set pool. And let's pass in the enemy pool. Also make sure to assign the enemy prefab and the spawn point into the spawner script. Now every 5 seconds an enemy will spawn and chase the player and when they collide you can see that it didn't spawn another enemy because the spawner is reusing the released ones. It will instantiate a new one only if the pool is empty. But we can notice that they don't get disabled and repositions at our spawn points. Also, when they get spawned, they are not starting from the spawn points positions, but from their own prefab transform. To solve all of these problems, we just need to pass in two more functions in the spawner script after create enemy. 
and this will be on get and on release. Let's create those functions. This will both take an enemy parameter. On release, we'll just set the enemy that game object inactive, and in the on get function, we'll have to set the object active again and also reset the transform position. To make them respawn at a random spawn point, we have to create a new transform variable called random spawn point, and this will be equal to the spawn points array element of index random dot range between zero and the array length. It will be a random spawn point of the list. Now we can set the enemy transform position to be the random spawn points position. Now everything should work as intended. Press play and let's see what happens. Pay attention to the hierarchy. When the enemy collides with the player, he gets disabled and released to the pool. But when a new one spawns, the one in the pool just gets re-enabled and repositions. So it won't create a new enemy game object until the pool is empty. We reached the end. I hope the process of object pooling got a little bit more clear for you. And if you have any questions or feedback or video idea that you want to see, do not hesitate to tell us in the comments or on our socials. Thank you for watching and until next time, peace.